Back on HQ, our on the clock draft special presented by Jeep. I'm Chris Hassel, and uh, Trey Jones was just drafted by the San Antonio Spurs. We've got Mr. San Antonio in Avery Johnson with us. So, Avery, what do you make of the pick? You took uh, Devin Vassell, number 11 overall. Gary gave that an A minus in the first round. Yeah, I, I would give this uh, a, uh, an A because, you know, you're talking about the ACC uh, defensive player of the year. So it's not just what he can do on the offensive floor, you know, breaking down the defense, uh, you know, being able to, you know, he's got a nice pull-up jump shot. Uh, he, he'll, be, he'll be able to knock down an NBA three-point shot. But I think it's the defense on and off the ball being able potentially be a high steals guy, especially coming off the bench uh, in his first year to uh, to help the Spurs shore up their backcourt defense because that's the one thing that's missing. You know, they, they have some guys that can score the basketball. Uh, uh, you know, when you talk about uh, Greg Popovich's team, he wants players that are disciplined. And what a better guy that he could have stolen in the second round who could have very well went in the first round from a Mike Krzyzewski coach team and Trey Jones to join a culture like the San Antonio Spurs. Hey, Gary Parrish, why do you think he slid all the way to 41? I honestly have no idea because there are no, at least no character issues as far as I've uh, been told when it comes to Trey Jones. Obviously, he comes from an incredible program. Mike Krzyzewski had recently said he was the best point guard in this draft. Now, I thought that was overstating it, but I did have him as a top 25 pick. You know, he's uh, not a terrific athlete, but, you know, he he knows how to run your team. He knows how to play. He's tenacious on the ball in terms of being an on-ball defender. I mean, if you went to Duke two years ago, when Zion Williamson was there, R.J. Barrett was there, Cam Reddish was there. Sure, it was obvious the biggest reason they were awesome is because of Zion and R.J., but that Duke staff really put a lot of emphasis on Trey Jones being a tenacious on-ball defender and getting the ball where it needs to get. And then as a sophomore, he was asked to play more of a scoring role, and he did, and scored at a level that allowed him to be the ACC Player of the Year while shooting 36% from three-point range. His brother... Tyus Jones is a backup point guard with the Grizzlies and a very good one. And I believe that Trey Jones has got an opportunity to be better than him. So if you can get him outside of the top 40, uh, I would scoop him up as quickly as I could. Now you mentioned Zion and last year and all those great Duke players who have gone not just the lottery, but top 10, top five, number one overall. Avery Johnson, how do you make sense of the fact that this year there were no Duke Blue Devils taken in the first round? Yeah, it's pretty interesting uh, because normally, you know, when you talk about the University of Kentucky, uh, Duke, their names have consistently, you know, University of North Carolina, you know, have players that go in the first round. So it's a little bit surprising, uh, especially, you know, not only with Trey Jones, but also Vernon Carey. Uh, both of those guys could have very well gone in the first round, but uh, Trey Jones is a quarterback on the floor. Uh, I think this could very well in the future be one of the steals of the uh, second round. You know, uh, it, it is surprising on some level that Duke didn't have a first-round pick, if only because I thought Trey Jones would be a first-round pick, and Vernon Carey had an opportunity as well. Some of it, though, is that, you know, another Duke freshman, Matthew Hurt, um, is somebody that projected a year ago as a possible lottery pick, and he just did not have the freshman season that anybody thought he was going to have, myself included. And so um, they lost a lot from the previous class. You know, remember, they had three lottery picks in that from that team. And then Vernon Carey is an awesome college player, but not perfectly suited for the modern NBA. Uh, that's why he ends up slipping. And again, I'm frankly surprised that Trey Jones slipped all the way into the 40s. I would not have been shocked if he was available at 31, 33, 35. But going all the way into the 40s, I would have bet a lot of money that that did not happen. He becomes the 99th Duke Blue Devil to be drafted, the 66th 
from Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski. As we take a look at the last five selections, Trey Jones, 41 for the San Antonio Spurs, a couple to the Pelicans, Elijah Hughes and Nick Richards. We're coming right back here on HQ. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.